Cusco, Peru. It's way more than just Machu Picchu. Cusco sits at 11,150 feet above sea level and it's located in the middle of the beautiful Andes Mountains. Where else can you get these views? Cusco is famous for the breathtaking historical main square, the cobblestone streets, and many ruins of the ancient Inca civilization. We had such a good time exploring many different ruins while we visited in Peru. Cusco is easy to explore during the day, but it really comes alive at night. We traveled around Peru for two and a half months, so I wanted to share with you some of the restaurants we enjoyed, costs of some of the tours that we took, and at the end of the video, I'll share some tips that we learned. Plus, I'll tell you some places that you can see in and around Cusco that are completely free. Peru has always been a place that I wanted to visit, but had no idea just how impressive the landscapes would actually be and how diverse the country really is. I've put together a list of recommendations based on the great experiences we had. And if you're planning a trip to Cusco, I hope you'll find our recommendations and tips helpful. You'll find all the locations mentioned in this video in the description box below. Now, I didn't really know what to expect in terms of what Peruvian food really was, except I knew they were known for potatoes. Lots and lots of potatoes. And yes, we did get our fill of delicious potatoes, but Cusco offers such a wide range of food options. But let's start with what seemed to be our Peruvian staple, and that was roasted chicken, and yep, you guessed it, potatoes. If you've been to Peru, you know exactly what I mean when I say that the roasted chicken is some of the best you'll ever have. Top three places were Brozo Chicken, Los Toldos Chicken, and Pizzeria. Funny, they were literally right beside each other. But we did find Los Toldos Chicken and Pizzeria a little bit more expensive because it had a few more Western dishes on the menu. And the third place was Grimaldo's right across from the Plaza San Francisco. When you order your roasted chicken in Peru, many times it comes with a small side salad or some other unexpected side dish. But the portions are huge and the chicken is so juicy and the service was always quick and friendly. Poncho's chicken was also very good, but there are so many roasted chicken places. If I named all the ones we ate at, this would be a very long video just on chicken. If you don't want to venture too far away from the main square and are craving Irish food, well, you're in luck. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> yes, we went to Patty's Irish Pub and the food was delicious. And who doesn't like the vibe of an Irish pub? Plus, the views were amazing. Native burgers and salad was very good as well. Service was excellent. And the prices are a little bit closer to Western prices, but the food was so good and a little bit on the fancy side. Avocado was another cute shop we had lunch at. Jay had a burger and I had a chicken wrap. Our entire meal was about 25 Canadian. So closer to the main square, you'll find prices are a little bit higher. The San Pedro market is close to the main square and it is filled with everything you could possibly need when you're coming to Cusco. I wanted to include it because it's inexpensive and it's about as authentic as it gets. I had a bowl of soup and it was eight soles, which is about $3 Canadian. So there are budget friendly options without going too far from all the action. I'm also a fan of Chinese food. When I said there was a variety of food options in Cusco, I wasn't kidding. The wonton soup here was so good. One of the things Jay and I like to do is grab a coffee from a random coffee shop and just take a stroll. We do this back home in Canada, but we found the coffee portions in Cusco to be very small compared to what we're used to. But we did find this cute coffee shop called Peru Cafe, and we got this yummy iced latte and found a few other delicious treats. So maybe it's only hot coffee that comes in smaller portions in Cusco? We don't typically drink Starbucks, but we did go there when we wanted a Canadian-sized coffee. Many of the coffees we did get from the various shops we visited were delicious. We just wanted a bigger portion, I guess. So that's something to keep in mind for all those coffee drinkers that are watching this.
While strolling around the main square, the dogs were super fun to watch. And there are so many stores selling anything you could think of. There were places selling trekking gear, clothing made from alpaca fur. But if you're looking for a one-stop shop, Inti Killa is the place to go. This place has everything you need and then some. They sell all the layers to keep you warm on the cold nights and souvenirs as far as the eye can see. I wanted to mention San Pedro Market again because if you're staying in Cusco for a longer period of time, you'll find lots of local goods being sold here, like fresh fruits and vegetables, you'll find packaged coffee, cheese, flowers, dried goods, clothes, and lots of delicious soup. Something else you'll find everywhere in Cusco are tour companies wanting to sell you tours from Cusco to the various attractions. We ended up booking tours with two different companies, Austin Gate Trekking Company and Clap Travel. The Austin Gate Trek that we did, I would highly recommend. It was absolutely awesome. And the Austin Gate Trekking Company was very easy to book with. It was a day trip from Cusco. It cost $44 Canadian. It was a long day at 14 hours, but it included breakfast and lunch. We used Clap Travel for many of the day trips we did from Cusco. Karina was so nice to work with. One of the important things that I wanted to share with you is that the tours from Cusco are very long and they leave bright and early in the morning. So just keep that in mind. This tour we did was Pacoyo Rainbow Mountain and it was 58 Canadian per person. Again, it was a very long 14 hour day. It included breakfast and lunch and it was totally worth it. If you just want to sit and relax, but see Cusco at the same time, I would highly recommend the city bus tour. It only cost $12 Canadian per person, and it was about four hours long. Totally worth the money. Especially if you've had an action-packed vacation, but you still want to feel like you're exploring, it's perfect. We also went to Machu Picchu, and I did a full video on that adventure, including what circus we did and how much it costs. I'll leave that link up on the screen here for you to go check out after this video. When coming to Peru, there are three important tips that I wanted to share with you that we learned when we went to Peru. And the first one is when you're using the banks in Peru, never accept the conversion rate when you're withdrawing money. Like most countries, it will always cost you more if you accept the conversion in the country you're withdrawing money from. And at this Scotia Bank, it added a 9% markup on the transaction fee if we were to accept the conversion. Also, two other things to talk about when banking and spending money in Peru. If you're going to be paying in cash, use soles because you'll always get a better exchange rate than if you were to pay in, let's say, American or Canadian. And while you're planning your trip to Peru, do some research on whether or not the bank you use in your home country has any affiliate banks in Peru because it might save you money on transaction fees. The second biggest thing I wanted to mention is, and this all depends on which season you come to Peru. We came to Peru in mid-April and stayed till the end of June, and because of Cusco's elevation, we found it a lot cooler here. So bringing layers is a very good idea. Even the dogs wear clothes. <laughs> but not to worry, there are plenty of stores that sell warm clothes in Cusco at reasonable prices, just in case you find it cooler than expected. And speaking of cooler temperatures, if you're staying in Cusco for any length of time in the cooler months and find yourself looking for an Airbnb or a hostel, make sure you book one with heat. Something we learned isn't always offered when booking accommodations. We stayed in Airbnbs while we we're in Cusco and the temperatures can definitely get colder at night. The weather in Cusco can see big fluctuations in temperatures throughout the day. It can be sunny in the mid 70s, then it can drop below 30s in the night. Hence why layers are your best friend. There were a couple places we visited for free and if you're up for the challenge, you can hike to a place called Remiwasi. It's a great place to overlook the city and explore more ruins and close to the famous Saxe Woman ruins are beautiful landscapes and more ruins to explore for free. Like the Cochapata trees and the Cuenco Chico ruins, they were both worth the hike.
We had such a great time in Peru and we are looking forward to exploring more of South America. The landscapes have got me hooked on hiking. Even though we spent two and a half months in Peru, I feel like we just scratched the surface and there is so much more we need to explore. Maybe we'll get another chance at hiking the Salcante Trail without the snow. <laughs> we still want to hike Colca Canyon, explore the northern mountain ranges, and venture into the Amazon. It's like the next Peru trip is writing itself. If you found this video helpful in any way, hit that like button, leave me a comment or a question below, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. In the next video, I'll be breaking down which adventures in Peru were our absolute favorites and, in hindsight, which ones we would recommend you skip. Hit that subscribe button to follow along and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.